At the heart of Yu-Gi-Oh lies a principle as ancient as warfare itself. Encompassed by the strategic musings of San Tzu and mirrored in the duelist quest for supremacy, the decisive nature of opening gambits, or as I call it, the turn one philosophy. This philosophy asserts that the key to triumph is not merely in the strength of the forces at play, but in the precision and forethoughts of their initial deployment. The essence of victory, therefore, is often determined in the second and third turns, setting a foundation for the duel's outcome, regardless of the turn count to follow. What's going on, my boys? That was an excerpt from the last chapter in my book of Revival of the Duelist, my boy. It is a manuscript that I put together to return to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, you might have seen recently I opened up a case of Yu-Gi-Oh here on this channel. It caused me to reflect on the game in a different way um, in which I have never done before. And while doing that, I unlocked a secret that I know for a fact Jesse Cotton has been utilizing along with many other a champion um, in the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game specifically. Um, this concept was, I was actually enlightened to this concept by playing the Pokemon TCG and Rush Duel. Both of those games helped me to see a different side of the hypergeometric distribution. And all those things we lead back to that concept. The hypergeometric distribution is the main concept that pulls cards directly from our deck to the hand. But this one thing that I learned um, through building a deck, uh, this is the one thing that will defeat Jesse Cotton in 2025. This is the reason why I might defeat Jesse Cotton in 2025. This is the reason why you might defeat Jesse Cotton in 2025. Because when I reveal this technique, it will become widespread. And once everyone knows it, it will level the playing field and you will see more intelligent more strategic duelists with an ability and awareness that you have never seen before in 2025. So Jesse bet better beware as I unleash his secret for all duelists. I am the one that will bring you the real tools. There's a lot of people who just going to be bringing you content. I'm bringing you value. So if you like value, if you're an engineer of the duelist, go ahead and hit that like button for me and subscribe. So if you didn't see below, I have a video here that I spoke on Jesse Cotton um, made a deck with 47 cards in it, which I thought was very odd. This is what got me started on this journey. That 47 card number really messed with my head. Why not 40? Why not 41? Why 47? So now we know in the opening hand of five cards, um, we, we typically want to make sure we have what a hand trap. We want to have a monster that we can normal summon. We want to have our, um, extender and you know we typically don't really care what those other cards are we typically want them to be other hand traps when you look at someone's deck like a jesse cotton's deck he runs cards that are a little bit different so i changed up the categories because people don't really understand what's happening here because Yu-Gi-Oh has a vocabulary problem which is causing it uh, an issue in terms of like players coming onto this game um, so that's my key focus here is to kind of bring this vocabulary um, together. So the normal summon or our starter card, the special summon and our extender card, we want to have a primary card, which is our go first or go second card, depending on what we've already chosen. If you don't understand going first or going second, you know, we talked about that in the distribution video, but just for the sake of that, our primary card and our secondary card, and both of those cards are gonna be go first, go second. So if you look at how I have this broken down, your normal summon and special summon is just trying to do a one card combo, however you do it in your deck. Whatever your one card combo is, your normal and special summon is trying to execute that. Um, if you have two, like in the, um, in Jesse's deck, you'll see kind of how it, that breaks down. Your primary card and secondary card, if I'm going second with primary card, what's that gonna be, Nibiru, 
you know, Lightning Storm, Raigeki, etc. You know, and an Omni card. What is an Omni card? You know, a multi-purpose card for the fifth card. You know, how do we quantify that? What is that? The Omni card is a card that pretty much serves at least two or more functions in a deck. All right, so as we look on this chart here, you can take a look and see Omni cards. What are Omni cards? Triple Tactics Talents, Bestial Monsters, One for One. We have our primary and secondary cards. So why do you need a primary and secondary cards? In my mind, it is a card that I play first and then a card that I play second. So let's say I'm going first and I have Imperm and Nibiru in my hand, I would probably lead with the Imperm and then they continue to play and then I play the Nibiru. Only because softening them up with the Imperm could lead them into playing deeper into my combo. So, you know, you want the primary card you want to utilize, which would be the Imperm, and then you have your secondary card, which would be Nibiru. But if you were to draw, for example, um, Nibiru and Regeki, then Nibiru is the primary card, and then Regeki is secondary card. So it all just depends on what you have in your hand. Then you have your special summit card, which I call the extender. And then you got your normal summit card, um, you know, which is the starter. So if you're looking here, you can just see that the hand is set up in this very even meticulous way as if we are expecting to have this particular hand. And this is the difference between Jesse Cotton and the guy at table 500 is because most people if they if they don't understand this principle they're utilizing this principle and don't understand what they're doing mathematically in his video he had so technically he had two garnets so again it comes down to that number 47 why 47 cards well here is the trick because we're playing two garnets you should never ever ever play a 40 card deck now, why is that? Why should we never play a 40 card deck if we're gonna play any Garnets? And and Jesse chooses to play two Garnets. So why not a 42 card deck? Well, see, I have come to understand that if you wanna run Garnets in your deck, you need to run at least one additional card to cover it. Going back to um, this original breakdown here, you know, what card would you play to cover a Garnet card in the deck at all times? You can't play another starter because another starter will clog. You can't play another extender because there's no guarantee that the extender can be played or be live. Playing another go first or go second card is a bad option. So what do you use? You use the Omni cards. You use the Omni cards to offset the garnets now i said mathematically this works out you know because you might be just saying okay sure i put in for every i don't know um literal garnet i put in triple tactics talents but in your mind that doesn't equal good and i would say yeah you're you're right on that assessment but see but here's the difference though you're not looking at 40 cards what you're looking at is 47 cards so that means if you're running a deck that has a garnet at all you should consider running more than 40 cards but less than 45 but if you choose to run 45 you can run more than 45 but less than 50 okay here we go here's the final part of the segment and i had to use ai to get these numbers my boy so that's why it's such a valuable resource duelistgpt.com use chat gpt look up the duelist ai for yourself but uh here we go my boy so basically in this deck of 47 cards there are two garnet cards uh the two garnet cards here is the uh diabel star card here and the um snake eyes flame birds dragon 
The idea is to make sure that we never draw these two cards and the Omni cards that I've identified in this deck i mean technically because he's ranked two he only needs to run three omni cards so technically one two and then here you go one two three omni cards and basically because um you have this balance um in terms of cards these extra five cards um that's going to leave the outlier of two so what's going to happen is you break this down into multiples of five and with a 47 uh, card deck that's going to be nine draws of five and with the nine draws of five the bottom two cards are technically excluded statistically from the draw so what that means is that you have a very high chance of drawing um one card which is like 36 percent but if you draw two cards it's like four percent or less depending on the situation so basically that being said it's almost impossible to brick on these cards and because we can set up our hands in a set row of five in the way that i showed you previously you can actually see what your weakest hand looks like and exclude the two garnets so your actual deck is the 45 cards the two cards are hidden but depending on how deep you want to hide these garnets as long as you're playing the garnets between one and four um you'll always be able to play this game of the hidden garnet um as long as it's one uh to four garnets if it's five garnets then it all just gets mixed together in the distribution and there are no hidden cards so that's just the one little secret right there but we're gonna check it out right now we're gonna do a few, a few hands in the simulator and see how often the bell star or flame burst dragon pops up in the first hand so let's go one time so that's right there in the very first hand 36 percent chance that one will pop up but although one popped up what does our hand look like we have our normal summon we have tactics, which is an Omni card. And then we also have um, the um, original Sinful Spoils with a Ghost Ogre. Now, you know, this definitely can give you some options, but also you have the Omni card. So the Omni card covers for this. So literally in the hand where we drew, which is a 36% chance that we would open with this card, um, we did actually draw the Triple Tactic Talent Omni card. So let's just try it again. All right, so we drew a second hand. Here's our Omni card. Again, we have our normal summon special, a normal summon starter, our special summon starter, and then we have two um, disruptions, or um, you could just say our secondary and primary uh, cards. So let's try another hand. Same here. You, you have your primary, you have your secondary, you know, here's your primary, here's your secondary. You know, you've got your, uh, well, sorry, here's your primary, here's your secondary. Then you've even got your Omni card. Then you've got your um, Seeker, Sinful Spools, and then you got the Fiendsmith Engraver. Let's just try again. Let's look at another hand. You know how many times we got to do this. All right, we're going to keep going until we get um, the, the brick again, the 36% chance brick. So look, we drew it again. This could be our normal, that could be our special. This is the Omni, you see, you see how good this is? This is how good this is. This, I literally cracked Jesse Cotton's secret. All right, here it is, and here's our Flame Burst Dragon. So now that we've drawn Flame Burst Dragon again, but even though we've drawn Flame Burst Dragon, we've actually drawn it in a bad hand. Here's Oak and Flame Burst, but it comes with Ash, Imperm, and Tactics. It comes with the Omni card again. So let's see if we can keep going until we hit one of the bricks without an Omni. Let's see if that happens. Because this is how um, Jesse always miraculously seems to have exactly what he needs. And what does he exactly need? Nine times out of 10, that Tactics comes in so crucial because it's an Omni card that sits in to protect a garnet 
which protects him from drawing two garnets and instead of drawing two garnets he draws one garnet and an omni it, it's amazing it, it, it's so amazing all right here we go double tactics poplar bonfire nibiru all right ash uh temple um here you got the baldrake and perm ash so as you can see it continues like this we keep having the optimal hand in the way that i described it to you earlier uh, with that set of five and the omni card helps to even um out the ratios um and, and jesse runs more than one omni so here it is, here it is again the omni card with the brick like like you just see this like again we're gonna keep going until we get an omni um i mean until we get the brick card without an omni because so far we haven't bricked on this on this deck yet oh here we go finally brick card no omni but clearly we've got our special and we've got our normal and we do got a, a reaction but here it is this is the first time we've actually drawn and did not draw triple tactics talents with the bricked card so that is literally the secret the secret is the ability to bury the garnet and ensure that you don't draw two garnets um when you're playing your deck you only draw one if you ever draw one if you have to draw one it's going to be one and if you draw one and you run the particular omni cards like tactics yeah, they're powerful enough to cover um the neg one of the brick but technically you, through the combo lines you do play and execute um these cards so let me know what you think my boys um in the comment section below you know try it out in your deck you know make sure you build your deck as i told you in the uh, previous parts of this video and as always keep it dank